How does a steam engine work? Here is a simplified view of what you would see on top of the boiler of a traction engine or portable steam engine. Let's freeze the action and look at some of the important parts. The crankshaft provides the power to perform useful operations. It can be connected through a chain of gears to the wheels to make a traction engine move, or it can be used to drive other machinery on the belt. The crank is there to change the horizontal movement of the piston into rotary movement of the crankshaft. Notice the counterweights used to keep the crankshaft balanced. The heavy flywheel is there to smooth the rotation of the crankshaft as the piston changes direction. It is often used to drive other equipment using a long leather or canvas belt. The eccentric is a very important part of a steam engine. We will explore what it does in detail later on. The connecting rods, more commonly known as con rods, are there to connect the rotating part of the engine to the oscillating part. The engine block is normally found just behind the smokestack. This provides the movement of the piston which drives the crankshaft. There are many other devices on the engine block, such as the control valve, the pressure safety valve, the governor and of course the whistle. These have been left out for the sake of simplicity. It is the movement of the piston that drives the whole steam engine. It is connected to the crank via a conrod. The other device is known as the valve gear. This is connected to the eccentric through its own conrod. The engine block is provided with high pressure steam from the boiler. This is used to drive the piston. Once the steam has done its job, it passes out of the engine block through the exhaust pipe. The cool steam is usually sent up the stack, which improves the draw of the firebox. Let's see what happens inside the engine block. Steam from the boiler enters the steam chest. It is very hot and under great pressure. The sliding valve is like a box that controls where the steam in the steam chest is directed. The cylinder contains the piston. It is essential that the piston fits tightly in the cylinder. A leaky piston would weaken the engine considerably. The exhaust is a large pipe designed for efficient removal of the cooled steam. The engine block contains channels to direct steam either from the steam chest to the cylinder or from the cylinder to the exhaust. Let's see the engine in action. At this point, the sliding valve is blocking any movement of the steam in either direction. The energy of the flywheel is needed to bring it past this point. The sliding valve has moved a little to the right under the control of the eccentric. Now, high pressure steam can move from the steam chest to the left side of the cylinder. At the same time, the right side of the cylinder is open to the exhaust. High pressure on the left side and low pressure on the right side pushes the piston to the right. As the steam expands, it cools and the pressure drops. The piston has reached the end of its travel. The sliding valve has once more blocked steam movement and the flywheel is needed to continue the cycle. The sliding valve has started to move the other way. Now the right side of the cylinder is connected to the steam chest and the left side is connected to the exhaust. High pressure steam pushes the piston left. And so the cycle continues.
So it is the steam that provides the power, but it is the eccentric that keeps the engine running. As you can see, it is a disc mounted on the crankshaft, but not through its centre. The eccentric conrod has a large eye that follows the path of the eccentric. The eccentric is set around 90 degrees from the crank to provide the right movement, but it can be adjusted. The adjustment of the eccentric is critical to the smooth running of a steam engine. As you go around the museum, look at the engines on display. The Portable, Princess Marina, Consuelo Allen, the Joker. Try to identify the engine block, the piston and the valve gear. And can you find the eccentric?